This is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, September 21st. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Spotify may be known as a place for streaming music or podcasts, but on Tuesday, the company launched a new platform for audiobooks. It includes more than 300,000 titles from well-known writers like Stephen King and Malcolm Gladwell, along with independent authors and major publishers. The move sets up Spotify for two potentially big fights. One against Amazon's Audible platform, which controls nearly half of the audiobook space. The other is against Apple, since Spotify is asking people to use a browser for purchases rather than using its app. Joining us to discuss this is our music industry reporter, Ann Steele. And before we get started, we should note that the Wall Street Journal's publisher, Dow Jones, has a content partnership with Spotify's Gimlet Media Unit. Hey, Ann, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So let's start off with why Spotify is doing this. So this is part of Spotify's transition from being a purely music-focused tech platform into something bigger. Chief Executive Daniel Ek wants Spotify to be the world's largest audio company, the place consumers come for all of their audio needs. That started with music, it's expanded into podcasting, and now the company is trying to tackle audiobooks in a bet that it can capture that listening as well. All right, and I want to talk about what this is going to mean for the audiobook kind of industry and what it's going to mean for Spotify going forward. But first, I feel like we really have to talk about what this means for Spotify and its relationship with Apple, because with this new service, it's kind of asking users to go around in-store purchases and download using a browser. Can you explain that a bit? Yeah, so Spotify on your phone is on an app. And if you're on an iOS device, like an iPhone, that's something that comes through Apple's App Store. And so what Spotify does for most of its monthly subscriptions is to have people click out of the app and put in their payment information in a web browser. And they do that just because if a purchase is made in app, then Apple takes a commission on that, that it can be up to 30% of a purchase. So what Spotify is doing with audiobook payments is directing would-be buyers outside of the app onto a web browser to make that purchase. And while that does create a little bit of friction and it makes for a more clunkier buying process, it means that Apple won't be taking a cut of these purchases. What is that going to mean for the relationship between Spotify and Apple, though? So Spotify has been one of the companies actually fighting Apple over its in-app purchase policies. It's been trying to get regulators, especially in Europe, on its side in this battle. And so this is just kind of another move on Spotify's part to get around having to split their revenue with Apple. One thing that made Spotify stand out when it launched with music was its algorithm, you know, its ability to connect listeners with new music that they might like. How set up is it to do that with audiobooks? Yeah, so that algorithm took a long time to work on and get to the point where it is now. So there is that basis of knowledge. There's everything they know about how people listen to music. So there is the basis of the algorithm to work off of. But audiobooks are different. It is a different format. And they're going to have to learn. So to start, they're only doing sort of editorial recommendations. So there's human curators kind of surfacing, hey, here are some great books we think a general listener might be interested in. As people start downloading and listening to audiobooks on Spotify, Spotify will get more information about their listening habits and then be able to build on that algorithm. And then eventually they want to be making great recommendations just as they do for music. All right, let's talk about what this is going to mean for the audiobook market. I mean, how challenging is it going to be for Spotify to compete with some of the companies, some of the leaders that are already in the audiobook space? So it's a challenge, but Spotify has done this before. It came from behind with podcasts. Apple has been the dominant player in podcasts forever since the beginning of podcasts. And Spotify has really taken the market share very seriously and very quickly. So this first move into audiobooks, they'll have 300,000 titles and they're available on a pay-per-download basis, is pretty basic. So this is what several other platforms like 
Apple and Google offer. So there's nothing super new or innovative to start. And it also doesn't have a subscription plan, which is what market leader Audible has, which has nearly half of the U.S. audiobook market. How will this impact authors? Because Spotify certainly shook up music, and you mentioned it shook up podcasts when it got into those industries. I think it remains to be seen, and I think Spotify is working with these publishers and with these authors and discussing all of the options. Basically, they've said anything is on the table. They're looking at different business models. So right now they're starting with a la carte pricing, but maybe there'll be a subscription down the road. Maybe there will be ad supported listening like Spotify already has with their free music tier. So these are all business models that they're looking at and So they are looking to innovate. They do want to disrupt this business, but it's going to take some time and some experimentation and gathering of data and trying to figure out what listeners want, what authors need, and what publishers need. How much is this going to disrupt Spotify's existing businesses? I mean, is it going to throw off its music service at all? Yeah, so one of the questions that's been raised as Spotify has gotten more into podcasts in particular is, is there concern about taking away listening time, i.e. someone is listening to a podcast instead of streaming as much music? And what executives have said is that the addition of podcasts has actually increased total consumption that users have on the platform over time. So users are actually spending more time on Spotify than they were previously. And they're thinking that will happen with audiobooks as well. All right, that's our reporter, Anne Steele. Thanks so much for joining us, Anne. Thanks so much. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. For more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.